Hey, it's Joel. What's behind me here is really cool. We're going to talk about it in just a little bit. Thanks to Nexa 3D for bringing my team to Formnext here in Frankfurt, Germany. This is Joe. Hello. It's, a, it's finally Friday. It's finally a beautiful Friday. It's a beautiful Friday. This is the Prusa XL. It's this is Thursday. what we've all been waiting for. Is it? I have no idea. <laughs> Jet lag. I, I don't know what time Army. it is. Last three weeks were crazy <laughs> for us. I, mean, I would imagine so. Yeah. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you very much. You, uh, a new baby was born. It's, it's a wonderful <laughs> little baby. And, well, not so little anymore. So it's, it's, it's a brand new Prusa XL, and it's completely different than anything you've offered before. So at the top right now is a brand new extruder. Yes. 20 to 1 gear ratio, cycloidal, cycloidal drive, right? Cycloidal. Oh Can you see? see? You can't even say it anyway. But that's up so, top. Yeah. And why did you choose that? So we really wanted to have a fully integrated extruder. You can actually see it here on the looking glass display. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And so the, there is one central uh, milled aluminum part, uh, which acts as a heat brake, holds the motor, holds the body of the gearbox, and we also have the strain gauge in it. And that is oh, that's the special part. That's so, the secret sauce, isn't it? So basically, uh, we are losing pin down. What? And you just home by tapping basically anything you put in there. So the bed, <laughs> a piece of wood, the, the fish yeah, you had for dinner, yeah. you could level against anything yeah. with the nozzle at, itself. At any resolution you want. Oh, yeah. So like, you mean like 5x5, five 10x10, by five, by ten, you can create 500 the 500 by 500. Oh, jeez. We could theoretically do 3D scanning with it. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Very rudimental. And then some companies were doing uh, extruders with load cells, but okay. it's like digital, zero or one. Right. But we have the full analog read. So we can, uh, we can be way more precise and, uh, and based on the data find out a lot of things. And we positioned it in a way that we can also, it is not exactly correct to, to say it like it, but we can measure the pressure in the, in the nozzle. Oh, I see. So we can detect if the nozzle is jammed because there is a giant spike in the, in the strain in the part and it is really precise. So it's it's able to tap the nozzle on whatever you put on the bed or the bed itself in order to, to provide a level. I heard you're getting rid of Live Adjust Z. Yes. So far, when we are testing, you can uh, slap any type of sheet and you have just perfect first layer. And we don't have to worry about the heat of the bed or the nozzle when doing the leveling at this point. Exactly. That's awesome. And, and also, I mean, you don't have to do any recalibration when you switch the nozzle or if you do different sheets. Another cool part <laughs> is we have a new uh, new nozzle, okay. which is integrated with uh, stainless steel tube. It is co-developed with E3D, but uh, it is not Revo compatible. We were working on it way before. Oh, I see. Okay, so co-developed, but this is your own thing. Yes. Here. Okay. Yes. 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 And uh, you can swap the nozzle in you know 30 seconds. Oh, so same sort of thing where you can do like yeah. a, a one-handed nozzle change. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. We also, uh, in the gearbox, there's you know, more details in the video. We don't use Bontech, but we have our own thing. And we have a giant drive gear. I saw that, a really big so, one. And you have two of the, uh, the bearings that you push against, right? Yes, basically dual drive gear, uh, the, the reason for it is to have more uh, surface area touching the filament. Yeah. But you don't have to have two, you can have one large one. And what is nice, um, when you have larger diameter, for example, on the Bontech, uh, the, the filament gets a little bit chewed because in the inside, uh, it moves slower than on the outside in the groove. Oh, I see. So this eliminates that. Yeah, so, you know, it is much more consistent. Sometimes you know that you had different E-steps per millimeter for different materials. Yeah. That's because, because of this uh, chewing factor. I see. Yeah. So then, no more chewing factor here. Yes. Well, then we have <laughs> then we have a new thermistor in their heat break because we found out that some, some materials like the heat break temperature to be a little bit higher, some a little bit lower. And, oh. And, and so wait a minute, wait a minute. A thermistor in the heat break. So there's, is there a thermistor in the heater block as well? Yes, still? yes, yes. Okay. And that's additional one. Ah. Okay. And you know we can prevent a lot of the heat creep issues 
you might see on other printers. And we can go on and on and on. Well, it just seems like, at least in this, this top part, in the head here, you have uh, extra sensors and you have the ability to get a lot more data during the printing process, which yes. means you can troubleshoot, give information to the operator, yes. or yeah. fix it and keep printing. Yes, and we, you know, we, we are using all of this for testing. We have. Uh, we are sending all the data through MQTT to a giant database and we have Grafana dashboards and everything like that. Oh cool. So I'm looking forward to what we can do with the big, uh, big data in the, in the future. It'll be kind of interesting to see if having a lot more of these in the field, kind of the data yeah. that's provided. Yeah, I think, I think what we will be able to achieve with, with enough data is to basically uh, predict that the nozzle clock you know that mm -hmm. we, we can see that just before it happens, the force is slowly increasing. You'll you'll recognize the preconditions for the yes. failure and yeah. be able to kind of cut it off yes. right at the pass. And we have multiple ideas like that. I would imagine so. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, so a lot more information, obviously at the link down below where people can learn more yes. about it. I want to get down to some of the other things here because this is a Core XY. It is. Uh, I think Core XY is the, the only proper way to do uh, this kind of printer, the, the, bigger, uh, the bigger size. The Mark III, for that size, I, I still think uh, for the ease of assembly, it's much simpler to do it the i3 style. Okay. But once you go bigger, you have to go Core XY. Yeah, that makes sense. I understand. Well, and with Core XY, you can do advanced things like... Uh, um, input shaping. Input shaping, but, thank you. But you can do it. Oh, you can do this with any type of printer. Oh, you can? Yeah. Oh, see, I didn't know that. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. It's good to learn stuff. Uh, the bed itself, uh, 16 different yeah. heated bed plates that yes. work together, or you can only, or you can heat uh, sections of them. Yes. I mean, you can start from one side and heat it to the other. You can't start from the middle, okay? Because that would bow the sheet. But you know, uh, we like to use the PCBs because it's very efficient. The the heating element can be very close to the. Uh, to the actual printing surface, you don't have to heat a lot of mass. But if you go bigger, once you start heating it, even if it's not zoned, uh, it just starts to bow. I see. So it's cheaper and easier to manufacture small bats oh. and assemble them, and it's perfectly flat. And we, we have 16 thermistors on the bat. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have if you have a draft from one side and the bed is cooling down, just that segment will, will heat up more. So this this can eliminate cold corners then. Yes, yes, definitely. If you are doing if you are doing the the full bed, mm -hmm. the the corner pieces are heating much more. And also, if the if the overall duty cycle is below below fifty percent, we can save a lot of load from the power, power supply because we can like checkerboard switch them on and off. I see, so it's not a, oh, that, oh, that's really cool. I didn't even think about that, but you can alternate the, the, the duty cycle of all of the beds and yeah. the heat where you, so you need to. So this, this should increase the lifespan of the power supplies. That's really cool. Yeah, awesome. there, there's so many, <laughs> there's so, so many little things. Well, the, this is just one configuration of the XL as well, right? Because yeah. over on this side, can we mention, do you want to talk about, can yes. we show this? This is a, five tool tool changer option. The number of the day is five. Yes. And it's got, can I, can I do the accordion? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is, uh, that is, that is, uh, that is our draft shield. So you don't need a cover on top, you don't think? Uh, it's just one of the options. We will, we will show more, including full enclosure. Okay. But, when the when the shipping will start, I see. But this just kind of comes yeah. up and locks into place. I mean, I just I just like how funky it is. Oh, it's cool. Well, here, if I, I'm gonna do it real quick. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. And I'll put it back if, down. If if you are if you are limited in space and you are not printing like high high temp materials, you know this doesn't extend outside the printer. No, it doesn't. Not at and all. And you, and imagine, you can you can take out the part like this. Yeah, I I, I didn't have to bring an angle grinder. It's <laughs> it's pre-cut. <laughs> Glad I could help you with that. I well, was I was laughing at that video because I, <laughs> I, I we specifically wanted it uh, in this uh, in this state that you can like reach in and take it out easily. It's really open, and that makes it a lot easier to access things. But like you said, it doesn't just 
it's solid and it's not going to impact the performance. Yes. And as I said, we, we plan to have the full enclosures or anything you want. So basically that is, that is the simplest bare bones uh, machine. And this is the max out and you can add enclosures and stuff like that. That's so, that's perfect. That's exactly what, I think you're going to sell a lot of these, honestly. So this is the launch. You're not selling right now. You're taking pre-orders. Yes. Right? And you're yes. expected to ship when? That depends on, Next year on, the, sometime. on, the, on, the, on the situation. Okay. Uh, Q, Q2, Q3. Okay. Uh, because the parts market is really, really, really bad. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. We have so much stuff stuck in traffic uh, around the planet. <laughs> but but well, I, we have high hopes that it will clear out quite soon. I think it will, hopefully, fingers crossed. But for this though, you're doing a pre-order. So rather than Kickstarter and rather than um, taking the full amount right now and holding it for nine months, the, the pre-order, it's, it's, a, it's a small amount down yeah. and then that kind of holds your place in line. Yeah, th this, was, uh, this was one of the reasons we, we launched a new uh, web shop, which we completely made from scratch. Before we were limited by the old Presto shop we were using uh, to do the full uh, full amount pre-order. Right. So I think this will make a lot of people more comfortable, especially in this, uh, which is uh, quite a bit, bit more expensive than Mini or something like that. Makes sense. Yeah, exactly. This is a bit of a higher charge. People aren't going to want to tie up so much money for so long. Yes. But it is very important for us, so we, we know how much uh, parts we will need. That is important in these times. Yes, it is. So you can see the 32-bit electronics based yeah. on the display, but we have something quite cool. Uh, we are not showing this yet, but... Uh, There's a camera pointed at you right now, so you're going to be showing it if you talk about it. Oh, no, no, no. But it is pretty cool that the main, uh, main electronics is on an edge connector, so if something breaks, oh. you don't have to entangle anything. You just... Just slide it right out, yeah. put a new one in. And, and when you are moving from Two materials, uh, or two tool, uh, tool heads, mm -hmm. uh, more. You you add, mm -hmm. add in the additional drivers and it, everything that's Just needed. Just slide it right in? Yes. Oh, that's kind of cool. We are using the PCI Express connector. Oh, perfect. Oh, that's easy then. Well, until somebody will plug uh, in 3080. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put an RTX 3090 in this machine. It's going to scream. Yes. And we are using, uh, we decided not to go with uh, cheap rails. We are using super high quality ones. Oh, and linear that, rails on X and Y? Yes. And that, 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 that is a huge chunk of the price. I would imagine so. Yeah. But the, the good quality rails are going to lend themselves to long, longe longevity. Yes. It's going to yes, last yes, a long yes, time. Yes. Gates belts, right? I would imagine. Yes. Yeah. You can check out more info in our uh, blog post. I'll also, put that down there. Yes. Yep. In the wonderful video Mikolas made. Oh, uh, Mikolas did a fantastic job in this video. You're going to want to watch that. That link's going to be down there too. Uh, and the pre-orders uh, are open at the web shop. $200 deposit. Base price for a single one is uh, $2,000. That's right. And for, for this, it's $3,500. There we go. And if you want it fully assembled, it's an extra 500. 500. All right. Is that good? Yes. Hey, man, thank you. Oh, you want to do one of those? There we go. Oh, I'll give you a hug. Come here. <laughs> High five. High five. Man, I'm tired. <laughs>